All right, Star Wars players. We are live, picking up uh, the beginning of turn one here. Uh, this is game number two between Steve Baroni and Joe Olson in their OCS playoff match. They were supposed to play tonight at 10 o'clock, but apparently decided to just play now and uh, gave us about a 30-second warning that they were playing. So we're going to play this one on the fly. Uh, Steve looks like he's playing Dark Side Senate. We'll pick up his effects in a second. Joe's playing Throne Room. Uh, Joe won their game this morning, uh, game number one, by 17, I believe. Um, it was his ROPs against Steve's old allies. So we'll go back through the chat log, find out what happened here. If he did a uh, he did an according to my design start when his opponent played Throne Room. So this would be. Joe's first turn looks like he got only a dock, the two docking bays out, no other location pullers. Steve started something special, which he used to grab Rescue in the Clouds already. He started the Phantom Menace and begin landing your troops. Unique Republic characters, Forfeit plus two and Mundagunite, and it lets you also pull docking bays. And then he started the Maul site, which lets Maul deploy for free. E4 strain plus two there. Uh, does stuff. You can't force strain if Amidala's out of battleground. So uh, the site itself, not uh, too critical. Let's see, we get the Twitch up channel up and running, see if anybody's actually uh, watching. He started the Emperor in the Senate, picking up that extra icon. And now he's got Lot Dodd and Yeb Yeb. And he's going to flip his objective already here on turn number one. Let's go full screen. Uh, so Lot Dot is the good one. He's going to let you go through in your control phase, take a card out of your force pile every turn. Uh, basically like a permanent uh, force uh, tunnel vision or whatever you want to call it. And while at Galactic Senate, other Nemoidians are forfeit plus two. And Phantom Menace here, if Maul's on table, you can deploy a Nemoidian from reserve deck. So Maul lets you get them. I don't know if he's playing anybody else like Newt or Rune or anybody, but uh, Phantom Menace would be able to pull them, and Lot would make them forfeit plus two. So that's interesting. Um, and then Yeb Yeb over here. Once during your turn, peek a top card of opponent's reserve deck. You can either then put it back or lose a force to make the card lost. Uh, he did use that text. It was solo on top. So he lost another copy of Lot Dodd uh, from hand, and Solo is now lost. All right. So Joe's got 3PO to the docking bay. Can hopefully try and use that to find some extra activation. He's going right to his draw phase with his two docking bays on the table. I guess he doesn't want to give Steve a free peek at his deck, so he's not even going to get to verify as to whether or not any of that activation is in his force pile or not. And he will pull the Senate shield. Uh, one of the things this objective does on the flip side, in addition to making your Senator's Destiny plus two or three if they have the right agendas, when drawn for weapon or battle destiny. Uh, during control phase, use three force to place up to two random cards from opponent's hand into their used pile. The shield protects it as long as you have 12 or fewer cards in hand. You can't remove them. And then you can also do this to suspend the game text of political effects once per turn. Uh, don't know we'll see political effects, but uh, it's definitely going to force Joe to stay at 12 cards, with the objective being flipped to not have his cards removed. Uh, be curious to see if Steve has any tricks up his sleeve, like a set for stun or something. Um, we've seen people get around that in the past, when you have protections from like Yarna and things like that to limit you uh, protected from Monarch if you have 12 or fewer cards in hand. Um, they uh, set for stun one of your guys on the table, put them back in your hand to get to force you to 13. Um, and then they can do their trick. It's unlikely. We haven't seen that in a while. It was very popular in uh, you know the Decipher era as ways to get around uh, Yarna and things like that. It's not something... Uh, 
not something that uh, we've seen too often these days. Thank you guys all for joining us in the chat and participating in the stream with us tonight. Uh, will Palpatine get out of the Senate? If the Jedi Council Chamber comes out, yes. And that's certainly something that uh, would make it beneficial to start the Emperor there. It's fairly unlikely that we're going to see Yoda in this matchup. Um, but with a limited number of battlegrounds potentially in play, the simple tricks, coward shields, could also be rather relevant. Um, and with Insurrection out, I don't know what Maul's going to end up doing over here. So I don't know if he's, you know, he's not running if the trace was correct. If he was, he could be forced training for two there. Um, but yeah, I don't know where Maul's going to end up going. I don't know if he runs like a cantina or something. That he's just trying to... He's not activating a lot of force yet. Maybe he can't quite get to it. It's kind of floating around in here. Uh, he'll use Lot, take it into hand, and then you can slide Maul over into the cantina. Um, with Phantom Menace out, he Maul's immune to attrition against Jedi and uh, plus two defense value, so he's a little bit harder to hit as well. Uh, the Odin combo is also a thing that moves during move phase and only to uh, battlegrounds, I think, or exterior sites, or from an exterior to a battleground. Um, there's some combination of text in there that it's a little bit more restrictive. But for right now, he could be content to just find the cards he needs, keep doing yeb yeb damage. He throws away a force field, and uh, Joe loses a Wisa off the top. Uh, you can just keep doing damage one card at a time, right? 37 more turns, and uh, Steve will win. Uh, he's doing damage to himself, though. But eventually, he's going to find a uh, squabble to retrieve for all these senators and get back uh, probably five or six force late in the game. Uh, Toon Buck was also added last turn. He adds one to total attrition for each character with an ambition agenda. Well, he counts himself. I believe Lot has ambition. And Yeb Yeb does not. So currently, that would add two to the total uh, once per turn. Yeah, we didn't have anybody available uh, this morning for their first game. We'll try and get the replay link and do th uh, that one at a later time. Um, Tom Kelly was supposed to be able to do that one, but uh, had something come up and had to cancel. And uh, the rest of us were uh, at work. So it was, uh, as I said, it was Old Allies and uh, Ral Ops, and Joe's Ral Ops won by 17, I believe was the total posted. So be up to Steve to win by 18. And Joe takes the uh, approach of just drawing a crap ton of cards and let Steve, Steve wants to spend the force to put two of them back. Uh, I guess he's going to be okay with that because I'm guessing he's got a lot of cards in his hand he doesn't really need right now. Uh, but he's trying to find his activation badly because with only seven, there's not going to be a whole lot he's going to be able to do. Um, if Steve can find a way to sort of push the pace a little bit, um, he could find himself in a pretty good spot and put Joe in a bit of a hole that's going to be tough to dig out of. Uh, this Kashyyyk system being out, uh, if Steve can get you know a ship out here this turn and or two out here this turn, um, you know Joe would have ten force to work with. Um, profundity. It's probably likely in his hand at this point. Uh, we do know usually that's a, that's a ship that we'll see uh, a lot of people play in the throne room. And uh, Joe, particularly in his builds, usually includes profundity because, well, it's two force. There's a Wisa going to look for Boss Nass or something. He's going to grab the Wisa. Does he have a sense? Because that would be pretty dynamic. Nope, Steve's in his draw phase. Yep, Joe takes the boss Nash chamber, so he's going to get a little bit more activation next turn. And he'll peek. Let's see if that's a card he wants to get rid of. It is. It was Padme. He will lose. They're still coming through, which is the barrier, and uh, it's a trap canceller.
I'm surprised Joe has all four shields out. Well, it's throne room. How many shields do you really need, right? I'm sure there's at least a perimeter scan or humor baby, if not one of each. Uh, probably two perimeter scans. If you're expecting ROPs and things, you want to shut down Blizzard 4. And the tramples. Although Hear Me Baby is also really good against uh, hidden weapons and stuff. I don't know, I guess it would depend on what Joe expected Steve to play, whether what, what combination of those cards he went with. But he's already got Aim High out. He's got a grabber. He's got wise advice to protect uh, cards from being sensed. The Senate shield, the battle plan shield, other than simple tricks, um, which would require Joe to be at least at one battleground. There uh, isn't a big necessity for anything else that I think he would really need. Steve's definitely trying to push the pace here. But he's limited himself. They're both only getting nine. Steve really needs to get his hover cam out as well. That would give him three extra activation uh, at the Senate. And I would imagine he's got some type of other 2-0 locations, whether it's the bridge or the uh, sail barge site or something. Dagobah Cave, Wampa Cave. You can kind of play a bunch of 2-0s, uh, even the ones that don't have pullers, because of uh, Lot Dodd's ability to peek at stuff in your force pile. But uh, if he did have political effects, they'd be on the table by now, so we can safely assume that this will not be the political effect version. Uh, that's actually a an interesting play by Joe, putting out the 1-2 the location. He's actually giving his opponent an extra force icon. Um, it is an interior location, though. And he's going to get Jedi Luke there with the lightsaber. I'm sure Luke will drop a card from hand in just a second here. And then put a second character down along with him. Unless he's uh, concerned about what Steve may have. Steve's been digging out quite a few. Has had three or four use pile searches. Uh, three use pile search. Force pile searches by now. Sorry. And he's gonna add Ray. Okay. I wasn't sure if he would put a card down and who he might have, like an, like an EPP OB or somebody. Um, obviously, Lando would be no good. Um, Padme's lost off the top, but uh, he might have, you know, a lot of throne rooms now have gone to two Padmes. So, uh, Solo's all already also gone, but Ray for four. Excuse me. Just trying to get a little post-work nap in on the couch, and all of a sudden I get a direct message. Hey, we're supposed to play at 10 o'clock tonight, but uh, we're just going to play now. So uh, if any of you guys are around, that's what we're doing. All right. <laughs> Steve's going to pull oppressive. He noticed Joe didn't pull There Is No Try. Joe pulled Wise Advice, leaning toward the philosophy that he might be running a sense or an altar or two in his deck as well.
know, Steve's got 11 plus the 6 he left, so he's got 17 cards to dig through here to find the right answer. Why did he start the Tatooine site instead of Mustafar? So he could get Maul down first turn and then use the Phantom Menace to pull Lot Dodd to guarantee he would get Lot Dodd in the Senate turn one. Okay, you 3PO, utility answer. Uh, block the drain for a little bit until you can figure out what else to do. Um, I would expect that we'll see some combination of Corn Horn or Sorry About the Mess combo or Jar Jar and one of those Weeses. Um, to try and get rid of U3PO. Lightside does have quite a few answers to undercover spies, but, uh, you know, he could be saving the sense for the sorry about the mess or the imbalance combo uh, to cancel that. He's uh, certainly got plenty of cards to choose from in his force pile to set stuff like that up. Uh, he also adds Axe Mo. While in a Senate majority, capital starships are power plus two. Four strains are plus one at each battleground system where you occupy a related site. Well, I don't know we'll be seeing him occupy too many related sites unless he's uh, running Cloud City or Bespin or uh, Tatooine, but uh, making the capital ship power plus two could be interesting. Thanks for stopping by, CRG. It's weird saying that because those happen to be my initials, so. <laughs> now, Sean, I'm sh I would like to believe Steve somewhere in this deck has a, has a light side cantina. Uh, a dark side cantina, rather, sorry. Um, that he will be uh, playing at some point in time and moving Maul to whenever he's... Uh, comfortable with that. Steve's going to accelerate and he takes a pod racer collision into hand. For those of you unfamiliar with that card, if you just verified opponent's reserve deck, search that reserve deck, place one interrupt found there out of play. It's a nice used five that you can pull with the accelerates. Uh, favorite card uh, of a lot of people. It's one of those just cards that never, it's a 61st card that never really fits into a deck, especially when you're like, when you're already running like three copies of uh, Accelerate. So he plays Sorry About the Mess and he draws the Sorry About the Mess for Weapon Destiny along with the Chewy. So he will kill off U3PO and then be able to drain. Steve did not have a cancer or a canceller for that. Uh, yeah, but Pod Racer Collision is one of those annoying cards that your opponent kind of, you kind of force your opponent to grab uh, that they don't want to, uh, or they have to stop checking their deck to find out what their destinies are, because then you just keep picking out the highest destiny interrupts and stuff. So, uh, Steve top decks three to the drain. He loses the bridge and accelerate. And a new Gunray V, so he was playing more characters. Cancel game text of a Republic character with ability less than four present. Not too many guys that's going to work with. If with your Republic character or character with Trade Federation in lore, he adds a battle destiny. He's deploy three, forfeit six, but he's uh, plus two forfeit from Lot Dodd. So he'd be eight, and he is a guy you could deploy from reserve deck. And Joe went to try and pull a docking bay and gave Steve a peek. And Steve is going to play Pod Racer Collision and put any interrupt in his opponent's reserve deck that he wants out of play. So it's not even like it goes to his lost pile where he can retrieve it. it just goes straight out of play. Yes, O switch off would also be a good card to protect you 3PO from the sorry about the mess trying to kill him. Uh, but it does not protect you 3PO from <laughs> Corrin Horn, as I found out uh, in my game against Worfs.
I thought because it was breaking his cover, and then he gets stolen as a result of it. It might work, but they're two separate actions, and it's U3PO's text. So it was kind of a long shot that that would work, but I definitely confirmed that it does not. And there we see the Jedi Council Chamber hit the table. Uh, Steve put Fly Casual out of play. That was the interrupt that he chose. So I guess I'll make it a little harder. Either A, a little harder for Joe to find his Tantiv, or he just took the highest destiny interrupt and got rid of it. But the Pod Racer Collision goes used, where you can just keep cycling around accelerates to keep taking it back. And uh, just more ways of causing these tiny little points of damage. I wouldn't be surprised if Steve's got a limited resources in this deck the way uh, it seems to be setting up where it's just about trying to do as much damage as possible. Now Joe's going to overload the site a little bit more, add some backup. He's going to add Hera there and just kind of dig into this drain of three. So we know one of the sorry about the messes was the destiny he drew, so that's going to be down toward the bottom. And the other one's sitting on top of his lost pile. Solo's already gone. So there's a possibility here, if Steve was playing like Dr. Afra, uh, I don't know if he is or not, but if he had Afra, the coward shield is not out. So he could deploy Afra and fish you 3 po out of his lost pile and then immediately redeploy him and block that drain again. That'd be an interesting move. Again, no idea if he's got Afra. She doesn't really fit into this type of deck, but... Why do I feel like... I wonder if she... Maybe she, does she have Trade Federation in her lore? That'd be interesting. Yeah, she does have Trade Federation in lore. Yeah. Alright, so Steve just went to look for a political effect and did not find one. And Joe will get to verify the eight cards that remain. And now Steve will go get any card he wants from the 18 options in his force pile. Yeah, Enter the Bureaucrat would have been an interesting choice to slap on the, uh, you know, you 3PO dies and then you play that after he drains you for three, and now that becomes a drain of one for the rest of the game. Uh, that would have been interesting. There's always a possibility Joe's got a control ton of vision in this deck, but mm, probably not. All right, well, there's Vader. Vader can cancel Hera's text. Does Vader have any friends? Vader's got a friend. Vader's got a friend named Grand Moff Tarkin. Joe did save three force, though. Uh, could be a clash. Could be an it's a trap. <laughs> Who knows, man? I don't think either of these guys are using standard builds, you know? They've kind of... You know, if you're playing in a Swiss tournament, you play a standard deck. When you start getting into match play, you start uh, warping your deck a little bit to gear it towards what you think your opponent's likely to play. So, oh, there's the first strike. All right, so Joe drew a card with Ray off the bottom, and then he dropped first strike. So now it's going to cost Steve, uh, Steve, Steve dropped first strike, which is going to cost him at least one uh, to play each interrupt, and he will initiate battle. He also throws down Orn Frita, who doesn't really do a whole lot other than the fact that he's forfeit six because he's a Republic character from uh, begin landing their troops. Joe top decks a Luke's lightsaber. Steve retrieves Newt Gunray. Tarkin adds a battle destiny. He can't play Clash during the battle now because he doesn't have enough Force available. Probably still Swing. That's tempting. Probably hey, Tarkin's the one I would have suggested he go for, but hey, you never know. 
All right. Well, that's going to be a hit. Oh, there's the profundity, so we didn't have it in hand. Interesting. And a dark time or something like that would have protected Vader had he gone for him. There's the coward shield. So if uh, Luke does end up leaving the table here or something, he wants to make sure he can't walkling back anything important. Steve takes a peek and decides to leave that card on top of the deck. Could be a little gamesmanship here, seeing if he can get Joe to shuffle or Joe to waste the 3PO pull to move it. And Joe will go ahead and use 3PO. There's always that little bluff action between players sometimes where, you know, was it was it a good card that he wanted uh, Joe to move off the top? Then he just tells him, nah, you can keep that one. He's like, oh, it must be a crappy destiny I'm about to draw for Battle Destiny. I should find a way to shuffle my deck. And then you find out like it was like a seven. <laughs> All right, so he's got a five with the squabble. And a one with Kylo. He's going to redraw that with Tarkin because he's got two Imperials there. And he draws the hover cam. The card I'm sure he would have loved to have about four turns ago. So Joe dr oh ouch. So Joe draws Run Luke Run, which becomes a seven because of like my father, and then Ray adds one more to make it an eight. Now Orn Frita has game text and I'm wondering if he could have gotten himself out of this. During opponent's deploy phase, you may use X-Force to place Ta in your used pile, where X equals the number of cards in opponent's force pile. All right, so that's probably unlikely to work. Um, <laughs> I know he had an out clause in his thing, but yeah, you're not going to spend uh, 15 force yeah, to put him back to get him out of block in this drain here. Uh, so Steve's going to have to lose everything because he drew very well after... Uh, after using the 3PO. And now Steve will draw a few more cards here. Uh, he is going to get hit with this drain again. Oh, there's a double back. Does he have... I would think it'd probably be for Forlom, but he could have, uh, you know, Dengar and ship. Yep. And he did pull the Coward Shield. Not that it's doing much right now, because lights uh, are... There's no... Uh, dark side is not at a Battleground location. Steve's going to have to lose three more. He loses the double back, a Dr. E, and Maul's ship. So we are... Uh, sorry, it's first, this will be the first of our uh, two games tonight, um, which actually does work out a little bit better that they did move this one up a little bit. Um, game two tonight, uh, which Queso should be streaming, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so just over, just under two hours from now. 
uh, would be between, it's game one, between Steve Brenson and Gregory Shaw. So we'll see what uh, what those guys have going on. All right, Joe plays Evac, stacks the Run Luke Run, the Profundity, and Chewy on it. And then he drops Jar Jar and a second Ray and uses Ray to get any card from use pile. Yeah, this one will definitely be done in time. Yeah, that game between uh, Eric and Charlie. Charlie was just uh, yeah, <laughs> grinding out every last card he can. I I can't see Steve doing that. Uh, Steve strikes me as a guy who uh, always strikes me as a guy who uh, is very cognizant of uh, there's other things he could be doing. Uh, with his time than playing out a losing game. So, you know, he's uh, he'll obviously play it out for a bit. He's got first strike to do some retrieval. He's got uh, squadron assignment, uh, sorry, squabbling delegates rather, to, uh, you know, get four or five cards back um, for having the senators there. But what he's going to need to do is find a way to shut that drain back down. The uh, the downside to Dark Side Senate, or the downside to any Senate deck, is that you typically have four or five characters at the Senate. So that's a few card slots in your deck, plus a couple of extra copies of some of them floating around through your deck, just to make sure you find them faster and... Uh, so you have a, a number of characters that don't really do a whole lot for you. They have their great text for the Senate and for what they do and bring you to that aspect of things. But uh, there it is. There's that cantina. Um, now that Obi's also been committed to the table. But uh, yeah, outside of that, you know, you get them down there, they're at the Senate, and they're doing their little butterfly effect where they're influencing some things. But... Uh, you know, you don't have a lot of other card slots available for other characters to go off-planet. You know, it's usually a couple of malls, a couple of Vaders, um, and then that's what you're kind of left with. So he gets uh, the shuttle out just for some extra power and forfeit for Boba Fett, knowing that Profundity is stacked, and uh, that is one less ship available. Uh, Solo's dead. Padme, number one, is gone. Both Rays are on the ground. Hera's already gone. Um... So there's a limited number of uh, remaining characters. I mean, Anakin and um, possibly Poe. Um, that uh, that Joe could have to put on Cassian, maybe. Um, and if you, even even if he had the Tantive uh, and Chewie stacked over there as well. So his uh, his remaining pilot list is a little thin terms of characters he could have to go uh, attack that with. Um, Anakin, Corrin, Horn seem like the, the two most reasonable uh, guesses if the Tantive is around. Yeah, Hanchu and Falcon were uh, was certainly a, it's very incredibly powerful and efficient usage, but uh, Solo's game text certainly kind of uh, outweighed that. And then the combination with the Chewie that can shoot an EPP that can shoot vehicles. Um, yeah, Han, Chewie, Falcon. You pretty much now don't see outside of uh, very limited decks uh, like EBO. Um, or occasionally you'll see it in something like um, QMC or something. Just because it's such an efficient space package to clear stuff. 
get another drain of three. There goes a squabble, a masterful move, and a sonic. That takes Steve down to 18. And we'll see if Joe has anything left to commit to the board. Uh, Qui-Gon's also a possibility to go clear out this mall. But he only left two Destiny. Basically activated everything he could here, so... Be interesting to see what they might have up their sleeve. On the plus side, Steve is also now, since he's got these extra battlegrounds out, yep, there's the Tantif. Does he have a barrier for the ship? He definitely needs to prevent Lando. Oh, I forgot about Lando. Yeah, I forgot about Lando. Uh, no, Throne Room has almost never played systems. Yep, there's Anakin, as expected. So he'll be looking at two Battle Destiny, adding one to each draw. And I'm sure he knows what those two cards are, since they're likely cards he put back with 3PO. So I'm sure he's going to draw two fives, which will be enough to clear everything out of here. Uh, he doesn't get to retrieve, though, but he does cause an extra force loss. Steve throws away an extra copy of Maul. Ouch. He put the 7 back. Uh, that's a good card, though. Anticipating Steve, who had played TTO at Worlds, might consider playing it again. Oh, it was a Qui-Gon. It's still enough. He still gets the 10. That's still enough to clear both ships. And we've got a 5 for light side, uh, for dark side, and he'll see if he uses Toon Buck, which I believe is a declared action. Uh, yes, you may. So he has to use Toon Buck. So he adds 3 now because he's got Axe Mo there, so he has 8 attrition, uh, which will either be, which will be Anakin. He's dealing with forfeits for 8. And then Lando's going to have to go lost as well. Because uh, he doesn't have any f cards. Uh, he, I don't know if he used Luke yet this turn. He might be able to put, drop a card with Luke to keep Lando around. Yeah, he didn't use Like My Father yet. Okay, so at least he avoids that disaster of having a Tantive just sitting there by itself. And now we'll have to wonder whether or not Steve has a no escape up his sleeve to get Boba Fett back out of the lost pile. But with no coward shield out, he could pay for these drains, depending on, again, what else he wants to do this turn. Uh, now light side won't, be, won't have to pay because they have the two battlegrounds. Um, but he could pay for a drain of two and a drain of three, or just a drain of three. Um... He's going he's gonna to put something special out of play and retrieve the ship. So he'll pay one. He'll retrieve it. We know he's got Dengar and Punishing one in hand because he took that earlier with the double back. But I don't know what else he might have up his sleeve. Amara and ship, possibly. He does give Joe back his rescue in the clouds by doing that. Okay, so at the start of his turn, he's going to use his objective to go look for a political effect to shuffle his deck around. So then he can activate 13 and hopefully activate the Boba Fett that he just retrieved now that he shuffled. And uh, see if he can't pull that into hand and then try and use that to go clear out this uh, this Tantive.
definitely an uphill battle, though, trying to win this game by 17, though. And Steve's kind of sitting right on that edge right now. He still has some, he still has some time, but uh, the longer, every turn Joe gets a drain of three in at this lower plaza, at this lower corridor here, um, I think that just decreases Steve's chance of winning uh, significantly. I don't know as much you can do about it, though. He's got four characters there, 20-plus power, and he's got evac on the table to prevent multiple destinies, malls committed elsewhere. So that doesn't look so good. Steve will go pick any card he wants. And he uses the Emperor to look for Force Lightning to verify what's left in his reserve deck, which Joe's going to type out in chat for us. 113356. Joe's going to play the Rescue in the Clouds that he just took with 3PO, where he's going to probably take the Qui-Gon off the top of his deck. Now that he knows he's right there, because that's what he drew for Destiny last turn. He does shuffle the 7 around a little bit, but he also takes that that 1 out of there and gets a, a pretty key character in his hand. One who's certainly capable of not clearing Maul, at least doing overflow to Maul. Uh, and forcing him to leave, have to leave the table to avoid the, the overflow damage. Um, even if he you know, can't hit him for some reason, whether he misses because of the Phantom Menace, um, or, which also makes him immune to attrition, um, just adding a second Battle Destiny, if he sets up two decent draws, which um, you know he 3 po would and then he played Rescue, so it's a pretty good chance that he just set up two decent cards right there. He draws 10, he draws 11, so he's at 17 to whatever Steve draws. Steve draws a 5, maybe. Um, and even then, in that situation, he's still peeling. He'd have to peel 4 or 5 cards just to keep them all around, uh, which Joe would take as a win at this point, because then that's gets Steve down below that number that he needs to win by. All right, so Steve will drain at the Jedi Council Chamber and in the Cantina. Joe top decks Luke Jedi Knight, Wisa, Rescue in the Clouds. Now he's got a, a all off the top of his reserve deck. And now Joe's going to get drained for two more. There goes another Luke off the top and a Clash. And Steve will have six cards left to work with. He's got 18 Life Force down, and he's looking at drains of two and three. He does drop Kylo. See if that's a kind of on a suicide run here. If Kylo's got, uh, well, he's gonna need a gick, or this game's gonna be uh, over pretty soon. Um, still kind of works out to be an even trade, though. You block a drain of three by putting a character out. That's card number one. He's going to retrieve one and cause you to lose one with first strike. So there's card number two. And then you have to play the gick for the battle. So that's card number three. So you still kind of lose three force in this scenario. And your opponent gets to retrieve one. Now, if you hit somebody, though, there's guys he can hit. He can hit Jar Jar. He could hit Ray. That'll cause a force loss back, so you still come out one card ahead, I guess, in this scenario. And you at least take somebody out. But sometimes that's just kind of what you got to do. You got to just throw a guy to the lion's den and uh, see what happens. So uh, Steve's going to go ahead and shuffle his deck up again. See if he can't move those ones around and uh, get some better destinies going looking at what he had before one one three three that's 
not going to be good enough to get too many people. This battle here will also give Joe an opportunity, though, to pick up something off of Evac to get the Profundity or to get the Chewy. And it's not as big of a penalty to him to do that because Ray adds to the total. So he loses out on the one from Luke, but he still gets to keep the one from Ray, the plus one. say wherever Joe's uh, internet connection is not very good he hasn't really seemed like he's taken a whole lot of extra time on each action but his timers run an extra 13 minutes ready and this morning's game uh, was considerably different as well Steve had about 30 minutes left Joe was down to about seven uh, on his timer when that game ended so I don't know if Joe was just overthinking it or uh, if his internet connection is just a little laggy or his you know if he's playing on a laptop or a tablet or whatever if it's just a, a little bit of a latency issue certainly wouldn't want a timeout in a game like this Ah, oh, he had broken concentration. <laughs> he was going for a lockout to keep Joe from drawing up so he could just slowly ping and retrieve or possibly screw something up with the first strike. All right, so we've got a Jin Urso sighting. She's going to block the Palpatine drain for however long she stays alive. Joe does still have available to him a Wackling Retrieval, now that he has two Battlegrounds again. And he's going to put Padme down with Lando. Oddly enough, he does not appear like he's going to initiate battle against Kylo. Unless he's got a Jedi's Concentration or something. Where he's just going to be like, no weapon swings. Sure, go ahead and draw Destiny. I'm power 24. Yep, he's going to battle. He's going to retrieve one. With the first strike, he's going to make Steve lose one. He gets back the Clash. Steve loses the Dengar and punishing one. There's the Jedi's Concentration. Okay. So no lightsaber swings. So Kylo's going to get to keep his forfeit, so he'll remain, and I'll pick up the extra card. Yep. He probably doesn't need Profundity at this point. It's probably just better to grab Chewie. But he's going to grab Profundity anyway, just, just because. So Steve's going to get one draw, and it can't be modified. So if he happens to draw a Senator, they'll be their normal Destiny value, not their modified value from the objective. He draws a 5. So that gets him to 11. 7 forfeit from Kylo. Gets him to 18. He ups the attrition by 3 to 8, forcing Obi off the table. And he does have the Gick. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's Greg Shaw in the chat. Trying to pick up some tips before his matchup tonight. Uh... So Steve's down to 17 plus 3, 20 total. 
Joe is at 21 remaining life force. Steve's going to go look for a force lightning. Not there. I would imagine it's been in his hand for quite a while if he's playing one, which I would assume he is. Although he does seem like he was setting up the Emperor's Shuttle Package. Maybe he's not playing a Force Lightning in this deck. Joe lets us know that he's got a 1, a 3, and a 5 in his reserve deck. So if he had a Force Lightning, he'd have a 66% chance of getting rid of Jen or so. Joe wins this if he had Coward. Uh, yeah, if, if he had Simple Tricks out, that would certainly really uh, hamstring Steve's options at the moment. But if he had that shield out instead of one of the other ones, maybe he doesn't get to this point. So, All right, so Maul's going to drain for two in the Cantina. Try to make him peel off a couple more cards. Uh, Steve can certainly win the game um, from this point. I have no uh, doubts about that. It's just going to come down to what the number is going to be. And uh, that's going to be the issue. So there's a Dr. E. He no escapes to get the Gick back. Now he's got two battlegrounds again. And he's got a P59. Alright, so we saw a 1, a 3, and a 5 in there. So if you play those odds, you have to shoot Jar Jar. Joe does have a force left to use Jar Jar's text as well, so... All right, so you cause one force loss. You can't retrieve unless you want. Unless he's going to pay for it, he is going to pay and retrieve Kylo. And Joe will have to lose a force, which at this point is not mission critical to him. He'll lose the clash that he retrieved earlier. Yeah, I think if you have, I think P fifty nine has to shoot Jar Jar here because otherwise you run the risk of Jar Jar coming back and spending the force and making P-59 lost. All right, so he drew the five. So that's going to cause two force loss for him being hit. And Dr. E gets the option and will also operate and remove Jar Jar from the battle, which cuts down a couple of power and forfeit as well. And then Joe's got two force loss. Not the ideal card to draw. He was hoping he would have had the five left because then he adds three. It would be eight total attrition, and Luke would have to die. Um, now the best he can draw is the three, which then when he adds three makes a six and uh, gets rid of Ray. So Luke will still be there next turn, draining for three. And now it'll be Joe's turn to swing in a minute. As soon as he, fin as soon as he finishes uh, losing his two force, he lost Speak off the top for the first card. And 
he's going to top deck one more, and it's the relatively unprotected. And Joe's going to walk lane that card back. So he will pay one and then put the seven back. So three cards from the bottom of his reserve deck will be a seven. So he can activate nine force. Spend seven of it deploying Qui-Gon. One to battle. One to retrieve. Swing and draw the seven. And something else. And Joe's going to pick a card up off Evac. He picks up Chewy. Yeah, Chewy works as well. He doesn't if he didn't take Qui Gon, which I can't see why he wouldn't have. But uh, yeah. All right, Luke swinging at Doctor E. This should be an almost an auto hit. He's only ability two, and uh, most of the characters are dead or in Joe's hand by now, except for the extra copies of the Destiny Six Lukes and Landos and whatnot. Steve draws the three for Destiny, which was the sense. So he was playing sense. Okay. And Joe draws a four, which becomes a six. Oh, five, because he picked up a VVAC. My mistake. Yep, you have ads. No uh, Lana Dobreed to keep Dr. E's forfeit, unfortunately. So he'll be playing the Gick again. And with no force remaining, Joe could end the game this turn. He could just activate all 12. He could drain for 2 and 3, putting Steve down below the number. Steve couldn't pay to retrieve if he, if he wanted to. And then Joe could just draw up and draw the last those 12 cards and call it a win. We'll see what he wants to do. Well, I think he's itching for a fight. I think he's itching for one last fight here. He's got eight force. He can drop a card from hand with Luke to give him nine. Deploy Qui-Gon for seven, deploy Chewy for five, whatever. Battle, hit Maul, call it a day. Because now he doesn't care. He just wants the game to end this turn. Yeah, and Steve's down to 12 cards now. Drop a card with Luke, pay one to battle, pay one to retrieve one with first strike, your opponent loses one. No, oh, he's not even going to retrieve. He just wants to, the game to be over. He's just going to cause one more force loss. Joe will take a swing. It's going to be something in the seven, so... And then I'll have two Destiny underneath it. Yep. 
Now, he does put the Phantom Menace back in Steve's deck by doing this, so he does give him one more card back. So if that one remaining card in Steve's hand is Squabble, he can get back to 17. <laughs> I don't know what he can do with it afterwards, because he has no place he can force drain at or do any battle damage. But yeah. Yeah, just like in the movies, Maul and Qui-Gon fighting... It. Well, they're fighting on Tatooine, just like in the movies. Um, they just happen to be uh, in the desert in a different part of the planet. But yeah, it's the it's the rewrite. It's the uh, special edition F Phantom Menace. But yeah, both characters are hit and forfeit zero. Eh, Light Side not drawing the best of destinies here. All right, so they got nine... They got 15 total. Dark's going to draw probably a 3 in this situation, I think. Oh, 5. Okay, so he gets the 12. So he'll peel the 3 more cards. But that'll pretty much wrap it up here for this one. And we will update our bracket shortly, and uh, we'll get the other game from this morning. We'll get a replay link from the players, and we'll do that one uh, a little bit later just to make sure everybody has all the information and we preserve all the matches for uh, future posterity. And as I uh, mentioned before, please be sure and tune in tonight. Uh, stay tuned in about 90 minutes, 80 minutes now, uh, Queso Sauce will be streaming the game between Greg Shaw and Steve Brenson. And we'll just go ahead and wish both those players luck in their matchup this evening. There's Sidious finally showing up. That was the card he kept. Yeah, um, if he had, could have found him earlier and he could have uh, attacked a bit more aggressively, putting guys out of play, that certainly would have worked out uh, pretty beneficially for him. Getting rid of Obi, Qui-Gon, etc., bit early on in the game, or you know, especially Luke, if he could have gotten him off the table in that first battle. But things kind of bounced Joe's way this game. Getting rid of the U3PO early, and uh, well, they both didn't have struggles finding activation, so wasn't uh, a lot to work with there. All right, Luke will swing, put the final nail in the coffin on Darth Sidious. Or maybe not. Is that 3-4 that he's got there? Oh, 3-7. Okay. There's the four. Okay, so that's going to do it. Steve's going to throw in the towel here rather than just top deck the remaining cards. So uh, congratulations to Joel Olson on moving on to the next round, and uh, he will await the winner of the Silver Glen Adam Trunzo matchup. Uh, they're playing their first game on Friday, and uh, 
Yeah, and congrats to Steve on making it to the qualifiers and uh, getting to the OCS playoffs. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing him back again next year. And uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in this evening and uh, jumping in on this uh, short notice here. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Like I said, stay tuned. Uh, 9 p.m., so 75 minutes from now. Uh, OCS playoff game one between Steve Brinson and Greg Shaw. Uh, that's going to do it for me. You guys have a great night. See you tomorrow.